Hi everyone and welcome back to Waterhouse Board. First thing we need to do this week is uh, give a great thank you to Lance from Bundy Bear Shed uh, over in Australia. Um, Lance recently did a shout out on one of his videos uh, for our channel um, and as a result of that in this past week we've, uh, we've acquired almost 30 additional or new subscribers. So thank you to Lance. Uh, Lance has been a I suppose a mentor and a supporter of the channel literally from uh, from day one um, and we we certainly enjoy watching his videos and we we, uh, we obviously learned uh, um, from him uh, a couple of things as well so it's great to have his support uh, both from a technical point of view uh, but also obviously supporting the channel as well so to those new subscribers and obviously to not only those who joined in the past week but anybody who's joined us recently First of all, welcome. Uh, we thank you for joining us. We hope that you will continue to enjoy the, the content that, we, that we're sharing. Um, and just a very brief intro to the channel. Um, Oscar and I acquired a 1952 Ferguson TED20 um, back in August 2018. Um, and since then, we've been working through it slowly but surely from the back end all the way through to the front end and we're now on working on the engine predominantly. Um, so recently we split the tractor, uh, we've dismantled the, the whole engine, we've uh, literally stripped the entire block, uh, we recently stripped the cylinder head and in our most recent video uh, published last week we were removing the uh, valve stem guards and encountered a couple of problems with that. Um, also, I guess a thank you to all of those who uh, made suggestions and comments on uh, last week's video, uh, both on YouTube and on Facebook. Um, and really, we used a combination uh, of a few of those suggestions, put them together, and happy to report that we have now, despite some further troubles, we have now managed to get all of the valve stem guards out of the cylinder head. So that's what we're going to show you this week. That'll be at the beginning of the video. Uh, we won't spend too much time on that. We'll just show you the, I guess, the, the highlights and the lowlights, uh, as it were. Um, and then we're going to move on to removing the, or rather dismantling, the pistons. Um, so we're going to be replacing the pistons, um, but obviously we will reuse the connecting rods. Um, so really it's just a very short video or at least a full, short section of the video to show you how to remove the gudgeon pins um, and release the connecting rods from the pistons. Um, and that's really just preparing, uh, starting to get to the point where we want to start to start rebuilding and start re restoring um, some of the components that will need to go back into the engine. Um, other than that, we are um, busy, we're still busy making a puller, a sleeve puller, so that we can pull the sleeves out of the block. Um, probably on the, on the tail end of this video I will um, put, I'll, I'll show you a design that we're working to. It's a design that we've done in Fusion 360 um, and I'll just show you a few shots of that um, so you can see what we're working on. Um, yeah, so we're probably a week away from, uh, from, from having that sleeve puller uh, ready to, to, to use. Now, we also must mention our sponsorship with Anglo AgriPods, or from Anglo AgriPods. Uh, Anglo joined us about, uh, <laughs> yes, as you can see, uh, Anglo joined us about, well, it was August, uh, no, sorry, it was October last year, um, we started working with them, and they've been very kind enough to sponsor all of the parts uh, that we use in the restoration. Um, we... If you go back and have a look at some of our previous videos, you'll see us um, restoring the hydraulic pump. And all of the parts for the hydraulic pump were supplied by Ang uh, Anglo. And then they've also recently sent us all of the parts that we'll need to restore the engine as well. So in the next few weeks, you'll be seeing us using those parts. Uh, and of course, we'll talk through each one um, as, you know, as, as we go through those. But um, again, huge thank you to Anglo. They have helped, uh, helped the channel tremendously um, and of course it would be great if you guys wouldn't mind taking a look at their website, um, calling them, contacting them 
um, if you need any help or if, you, if there's any parts that you're looking for and um, I'm sure that they'll be happy to help. Right, so we're going to get on with that now. Um, again, hope that you enjoyed the video and uh, welcome to everybody who joined the channel recently. So this is the one that we uh, buckled last week and uh, a lot of good suggestions came through uh, both on the comments on YouTube and also on Facebook. Um, so what we've got now is basically a shortened version at least where this part is shortened, the main shank, the pushing shank, but now a much longer guard pin uh, to go into the valve guard. So as you can see that slips inside all the way in there now and now we can we can know that that is 100% lined or 100% lined up with the guard. Also it's much shorter so hopefully it won't bend uh, as, as easily. Um, we've also made the handle or the top pushing the the, the main drift part uh, shorter as well because um, what we're also going to do is we're going to push from the top of the head down uh, this time so then we don't need that extra that extra length here um, now that what this should do is it should at least drive them or get get them started um, and then we should be able to push them out uh, the last little bit much more easily um, probably with a, a similar one made with a longer a longer uh, shank. I've also uh, put some croil onto the uh, all around the guards from both sides. Um, so I did that last week. Um, so that's been sitting all week. So hopefully that's had a chance to penetrate um, and and seep in, and hopefully that will help uh, loosen them a little bit as well. Right. So we're going to have a go at that now. So what's happened now, it's actually shattered the um, valve guard. Dude, there's a piece right there. Yeah. I'm just going to show them. I don't know how you can see it. But, right there. That's just one piece of it. That I found right there. You travel from there to there. Hopefully you can see that on the camera how well, it's, it's deformed the shoulder it's of, the, of the drift. These things are super tight. Um, Okay, so I think we need to come up with a completely different plan. That's why we're going to take them out. Why couldn't we use the new ones of those to push out them? Yeah, you don't want to do that though because it damage the new ones. But yeah. one of the ideas we were given on LAN was to use the old one because we got a couple out, didn't we? Yeah. 
You see, use that, turn it down slightly so it's slightly smaller than these, and use that to push it out. Which um, it's not a bad idea, but yeah, good idea. Do I, set that? I just don't know how we're going to line it up with the new, with the with the one that's in there. Yeah. I suppose you could make it bigger to go through the middle. I suppose. Right, as you can see, I've now turned the head over and we're going to try and get those two those two that broke, we're going to try and push them from this side. Um, it may not work, but if um, we've got pretty much got nothing to lose now because the only other option now will be to, um, to, to drill them out, which obviously I'm trying to avoid if I can. Okay, that one seems to have gone. Okay. We have now managed to get all of the little bits out. So you can see those are all out now. There's two on the end, it's just I'm sitting on top of the plank, which is why you can't see through them. But right, so basically that's the head now. The head can go uh, we'll give it a, a, a soak um, so that we can start start the cleaning process. Um, the idea is to soak it. Um, so that all the little channels inside hopefully um, get cleaned as well and um, hopefully get rid of as much gunk as, as we possibly can. So in the end we had uh, two that were actually in the head, two of the guards that were in the head were actually broken in the head, in other words they were broken when they were probably installed. Um, Two of them shattered when we tried to take them out, as you saw uh, a little bit earlier in this video, but we managed to push them out from the other side again. And um, one of them, this, this, uh, sorry, this one here, number, the first one on number one, the cylinder, that's the one that bent the drift last week, uh, and in fact this week it, um, it shattered and when we finally got it to go from the other side it was very very difficult to get out so I'm not quite sure why that one was particularly tougher than the others but it would seem to me that uh, or it's, it, it's just possible that the, the, the ones that were installed were not a hundred percent the right size which is what might have caused them to be so tight um, at least that's my my estimation at this point but anyway Good thing is the head is now ready to be cleaned, thoroughly cleaned, uh, and then we'll be able to start putting, uh, doing a proper restoration on it, uh, which we'll video hopefully soon. Okay. Okay, so what we have now is the, we've basically got the four pistons, we've got number one, two, three, and four. Now, when you're working with a piston, there are two things. The main thing we want to do is to remove the gudgeon pin, which is basically the pin that runs through the center here um, and through the connecting rod, because we're looking to release the connecting rod. But for the purpose of the video, I'm also going to show you how to remove uh, rings, um, a way which I've been taught, in particular if you don't have a set of, uh, there's a special tool that you can buy for putting rings, taking them off and putting them on. But if you don't have one of those, then uh, I was taught to use a feeler gauge blade, um, preferably the thickest one in the set. So you have a look at your feeler gauge, you see you've got a 15 there, which is Why the biggest one. Why don't you just use them one. all? No. And, because um, that'll be too thick. Can we pull it a little bit? Now, what you want to do is basically get that blade underneath the, the ring. So you have to kind of open the ring slightly. Hopefully the camera's picking this up. And then you, you push the ring up onto the piston as you pull the blade around. That's clever. And what that does is it pushes the ring up onto the piston and basically takes it out of the groove. And then again you can just 
roll the door. You gonna try one, Oscar? Try the yeah, next one. There you go. And push it up. Now that one, you're gonna have to get over the. Well, you'll have to get it up and then on to, into the groove and then over again. Oh, yeah. Now you're in two rings there, so you probably want to pull back slightly. All the while pushing pushing the ring up. Oh, ooh, almost lost it. Oh, I'm in a bit. Okay. Okay. So now it's gone into the top ring, right? Uh, the top groove. So now you want to push it out. Basically, to repeat that and push it up onto the top of the piston. That's it. And there you go. And there's your ring. So simple, a nine year old can do it. <laughs> okay. okay, do you want to do the next one? Yeah, find the groove. And then you've got to repeat it. Now the truth is that obviously we're not going to be reusing these um, rings or these pistons. So another option is to simply break the ring. I can't honestly do this because it's all good practice. Yeah, for when I'm older. And of course, when you're putting them back in, it's just the reverse, right? Yeah. So I'm guessing we don't have that tool. No. <laughs> Having broken it, let's have a look at it. Okay, so no, these are. Okay, so I thought these were springs in the middle, but they're not. These are actually just what they call, um, comp uh, I think it's composite rings, in the sense that they have a, you see they've got like a piece in the middle, and then they've got a hole in the middle, right? Mm -hmm. um, and that's because you want it to be double thickness, double edge, but you don't want the weight, the unnecessary weight in the middle. So what they do is they make, it, they make the two rings on the outside, and they just have a joining piece. To okay. keep them together. Now other rings, the oil rings, will have two separate rings, one here, one here, and a spring that goes around the center in, in the middle. And you have to join the spring back together again. Right, now the next part, and the main part of this video really, was to remove these gudgeon pins around the center. Now what we've got is a circular, um, a circular clip in the center. And Oscar has a circular pliers, so if you pop them onto those two, yeah, put your goggles back on. And if you grab that pin, squeeze it together, keep it squeezed, and lift up, the pin comes out. Okay? Are we going to re -re be reusing? I don't believe so, but just put it to the side. Right now, same on this side. Make sure you've got it gripped properly before you... Yeah. Okay. That one's a bit more stubborn. Yeah. Stubborn okay, man. now... No, 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 no. Okay. What are you doing? Getting Put those down. down. Right, now we have to push that gudgeon pin out. Okay. Now that's um, a press fit again, so that 
will have to be pressed out. Hopefully it will come out with a little bit of encouragement. So we'll just get set up to do that quickly. Right, now what we've got, we've got a block uh, with a bit, sort of a V-shape in it and also a hole in it that the uh, gudgeon pin can go through. So we're going to lay the piston in there. Make sure that you can see through the hole. Okay. okay. And now I'll turn it over. And... Don't worry, it doesn't have to be lined up 100%. It'll line itself up as it comes out. Okay, and then use a little... I'll hold that. Okay, make sure it's... And using a little punch, we're just going to tap it through, and hopefully that'll be enough. Okay. Move around, move around. Is it going? Not very much. Okay, so it's giving a little bit tight. Try now. Okay. That should do. And that should pull out now. Enough Yay! to release the the um, connecting rod. Now the only other thing we need to do is remove the old bearing cams, cam shells. Oh, I thought we already removed them. I think we've removed one or two, but not all of them. Now, you see, it can only go one way, right? Because you've got a little pippy here and a groove for that pipi to sit in. So, just put it back in quickly. Look for the pipi. Okay, so that sits in there. If you try to push it this way, it'll go a little bit and then it stops because it comes to the end of that groove. So look for the pipi. So you go the other way and it will just slide out. Shouldn't now, we get them out all out now? Yeah. Now in here we've also got a bush and uh, that bush needs to be replaced as well. I need to just make sure that we've got a we've got a set of those in the in the kit. And that's how you remove the connecting rods from the pistons. Um, safest thing to do is to yeah, it's probably easier to remove the, the rings first, but because we're not reusing any of this, we're gonna try to do it without um, and simply remove the the uh, spring clips and then knock the gudgeon pins through and that's pretty much all we need. And yeah. <laughs> okay, great. Well, there you go. That's um, us removing the final a few um, Velcard um, Valve stem guard, sorry, from the cylinder head, and then also how to how to dismantle the pistons and remove the connecting rod from the piston. As I said um, in, in in the video, we we are obviously replacing the pistons. The pistons come complete with a set of rings, um, and all we have to do basically is connect them to the connecting rod. So um, uh, yeah, that, that the main thing, the main objective there was really just to get the connecting rods. Free. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. Okay. Uh, so once again, thank you for joining us this week. And uh, next week we're going to move on. Hopefully, uh, next week we'll have the um, sleeve puller ready, and at least to give it its first trial run. We'll have to see whether it actually works or not. Yeah. Um, but as I said, I will just tag on to the end of this video a drawing uh, showing the design for that puller, which. Um, which basically we've designed, uh, Oscar and I have designed together, and then we've actually made uh, most of the parts. I had to have one of the parts, and I'll talk about it when we actually get to cover the sleeve puller. Uh, one of the parts we had to send away to, to be machined um, to a friend of mine um, who's been able to help us with that. But um, anyway, I hope you look forward to that, and uh, we'll see you next week on the next video. Bye. Cheers for now. Say bye again. Bye. So people can hear you.
Bye. 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 Bye.